Hi, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project 2013. My name is Ashish Stoke and I am presenting this course on behalf of Projecting IT. This course is based on Project 2013 and takes you through a step-by-step -step process of producing a project schedule and managing projects using 2013. We have mapped the course to PMBOK edition 5 and we use the processes defined in PMBOK to capture the project work breakdown structure, break it down into activities, define estimates and assign resources. We have divided the course into four major areas that is initiating, planning, tracking and closing. As part of initiating, you will learn how to get started with a new project file. Here, we are going to learn creating the project summary task that displays the aggregate information for the project. You are going to learn the scheduling regime that is forward or backward scheduling. In this, we will learn how Microsoft Project calculates project finish date if you provide the project start date. Please remember this is the only place we recommend you to enter dates. The task dates are calculated by Microsoft based on your project start or finish date. We are also going to learn how to set up the environment variables for the project file. Using options we will see how to set up currencies, how to set up date formats and other environment variables. We will then look at the various different types of calendars supported by Microsoft Project and how you can create your own project calendar to capture the working and non-working rules for your project. We are also going to learn resource calendar and task calendars and we will see the precedence of calendars used by a project for scheduling your project tasks. Look at some saving options like giving password protected files and also creating read-only project files. Once we are set up with the project file, we will move to planning which is where we are going to learn how you define the project life cycle using various phases that are in scope. We will look at the work breakdown structure and how we can capture the work breakdown structure in project 2013. We will break down the project deliverables into tasks and then we will see how we can summarize the phases showing deliverables and tasks. We will use important key, important decision points on the project called milestones and how we can set them up. We will also learn how you can show major milestones on your project timelines. We will look at various different ways of entering efforts. We will look at the formula used by Microsoft Project behind the scene. We will see the difference between a duration based estimate and an effort driven estimate. We will then move to creating dependencies between different activities. We will look at how we identify dependency and how we capture it in Microsoft Project 2013. Creating dependencies is one of the best practice in using Microsoft Project. I'm also going to show you how you should review whether you have captured all dependencies. We will look at the correctness and the completeness of dependencies. There are various ways of creating dependencies. We will also look at how to capture leads and lags when you capture dependencies. Leads will accelerate your task whereas lags will provide a pause between two tasks. Then we move to plan resources. We will look at various different types of resources supported, supported in project 2013. We will look at how you enter project human resources. We will also see how we can capture their unit rates, their calendar based on the location they work at. And we will also look at how to capture the availability of various resources on the project. We will look at the other type of resources like material resources and cost resources. Then we move to how we assign resources to the project tasks. We look at various ways of assigning 
resources to the task and we will also look at how we can capture fixed costs and variable costs in project. We will look at how the resources are being used and ensure that the resources are not overloaded. We will de determine if any resource has been over allocated and then we will see how we can level the resources using built-in features and also using other methods. Finally, we will look at how we can determine and display the critical path on our schedule. We will look at how we can format the Gantt chart to display project task, critical path and then also see how we can format the spreadsheet. There are many ways to show important dates on your project. You have constraints and you have deadlines. We prefer providing deadlines over constraints. We will see how we can capture important dates and display them in our project files. We will look at optimize, optimizing the schedule by using best resources on the critical path. Apart from that, we will look at fast tracking and crashing. We will see what are the different ways of identifying whether we meet customer expectations. We will then present the schedule to our customers showing how we are using resources in our project. We will look at the project important dates, we will present the scope of work, we will present the targets for time and cost and we will also show how resources are being utilized on the project. You can even show the project funding timelines. Once the stakeholders have given a go-ahead, we will baseline the schedule. By baselining the schedule, we mean that we freeze the scope, time and cost targets that we have agreed with the, with the team and stakeholders. Once the targets are baselined, we should not make ad hoc changes to them and only formal change control be used to make changes to the schedule. We are also going to look at how we are going to manage the baseline how we can preserve the previous ones and create new baselines. Once we are done with planning, we will see how we execute the schedule by assigning tasks to our resources, capturing the project time sheets from the resources and updating the schedule by using those time sheets. But we will look at how we analyze the progress using various features in project 2013 such as the views, tables, filters and reports. We will look at how we will report the progress to our stakeholders. Once again various ways to do it. Like if your stakeholders have Microsoft project that they can use various views. Otherwise you will have to export data in Microsoft Excel or PowerPoint or create PDF. We will see different ways of reporting progress to them. We will also look at the team performance by seeing how the resources are being utilized and the performance of individual resources by looking at how much work has been assigned to the resources against what work they have completed. And finally we will go into the closing phase where we will evaluate the project performance using the baseline data and the actual data. We will look at the variations and we will also look at the reasons behind, behind those variations. This will help us learn from experience and help improve the future project projects. We will save the project data and metrics for fu future purpose and historical information so that we can use those efforts in next project. We will then preserve the template. Please remember using templates is one of the best practice in Microsoft project. Templates help us get productivity and jump start to scheduling. We will see how we can save template, modify it and then reuse it for the next project. Apart from this, we are also going to look at the overall interface, how Microsoft project has been organized the interface, what's available in each of the menu bar. We will also look at various different views for resources and tasks. We will learn 
when to use which view we will learn how to do formatting using uh, the built-in features we'll also look at how we can sort information we will look at various tables and how tables provide us with different data we'll look at the time scale and we'll also look at the timeline option we'll look at various different views like team planners and task usage and then also look at how to format the Gantt chart we'll look at if we have to hold our project for some time then how we can preserve the data and if you have to start again how we can use the same data to start from there that's what we are going to look at to learn the project 2013 we are going to use a case study project and in the case study project you will be provided with sample files and exercise files you will be asked to go about doing the project work in a step-by-step -step manner. When we provide Microsoft Project Live Online Training, it is instructor-led and there is an instructor who helps you learn concepts. You can stop, pause, ask, watch and do it yourself. It's a very interactive and engaging course. It's not self-paced. This is a two-way course. You can interact with other delegates, you can share your experience and, and you can raise any concerns and doubts to the instructor. Post course, you can ask queries by sending them on the email. Apart from that, you can ask the trainer or facilitator to set up a separate webinar for you to help resolve queries. The exercise and project files you can try offline using your own interface. For you to learn project in a step-by-step -step manner, we provide you an e-learning access as well for one month on which you can try and apply the concepts learned during the online session. That's all for this session. I hope you will want to join this course and I also can guarantee that the course will help you learn Microsoft Project in a day and also quickly apply those concepts on your real-time projects. Thank you very much for tuning to this video.